What's up everybody? Main Fly Guys here with another tutorial. Today we're doing the saltwater pattern. This is a, a my favorite herring pattern. Um, to start here, I'm taking some fluff from a feather. This is a 5 aught fire hole. I think it's an 802P. Uh, but I take some fluff just back here. This is going to help my feathers, which are uh, some of the wider Chinese saddle hackle in white. Um, this will help the feathers stay orientated for where they are. So this pattern's gonna be around, you know, it's a herring pattern, so I want it to be roughly, you know, right there. That's about seven inches, six inches. I've been having tremendous luck with this pattern early season, like incredible luck. Um, so I just match them up, both sides, try to be equal. And I just try to have them so they're all orientating towards the back, right? When you shape them, you know, when you shape patterns like this, they will, these feathers will straighten out and look a lot more uniform. But right now they're, they're actually in pretty good shape. Okay. So, next step, we're going to take some flash and hit each side. This is just some, uh, I don't know what color it is. It's not pink, but it definitely has a pinkish vibe to it. Mirage, I think, maybe? It might be called Mirage. Um, not too much, just six, seven strands, something like that. Six, seven strands. Go down each side of the tail. Great. And then work our way forward. So we should have this. We have this nice tail with a little bit of flash. The herring are typically very uh, flashy themselves. If you've ever actually held a herring, you know that they're quite flashy. So I like to have at least a little bit of flash. So next I'm going to come in with my white bucktail and I want the tips to be about halfway down the tail. So right about there is about halfway. And I'm just gonna tie it in uh, regularly. What I do is three loose wraps, and then I push down with my thumb. And sort of pinch, push, pinch, push. And what happens is you get a 360 degree cone. See how we have this nice cone? Um, this, this first set here, when you take it from your bucktail, you're going to want to take it from the very tip of the tail. This way, this hair is not going to not going to splay out, but it's going to lay pretty flat because we want it to gradually increase in taper um, to try to match sort of a, a fish body, if you will. Great. Tighten those tips up, just get some nice wraps going. And there we go, just we have this nice slender body. And all each step is about is building body. All right, you can leave some space in between sections, you know. So a lot of people will want They'll try and basically, you know, oh, get that next wrap as tight as possible. But I, I like to leave a little space here for sure. So we're now going to do a reverse tie where basically we're going to tie it in the opposite way. Tips covering that thread section that I just had. So tips covering right to the back. And what I'm gonna do is three loose wraps again, push with the thumb, pinch, push, pinch. When it's all the way around, that's when I'll put some pressure on and you'll see things are starting to flay out a little bit. All right. Okay, then I'll take my fancy tool here, which is a Bic pen and it helps me push all these fibers back. 
this will create sort of a hollow sense, you'll see in a second. And that's where it gets its name from, it's a hollow tie. We're not gonna do a traditional hollow tie, a traditional one would go out front. We are actually gonna go right over the very ends there. See that little bullet forming? Some people call it a bullet tie-in. I really like this type of tie-in, it's very secure. Um, and it takes up minimal space if you want. Um, what I'll do is I'll zoom in on the next piece. But you can see it's starting to add, a, it's flaring out just a little bit more. All right. The harder you pull on it, the more that it will flay. Before we get to our next section though, what we're gonna do is overlay this with that same flash from our tail. We want it to be about the length of our body. And I'm gonna catch it on top of that bullet point. Again, pressing down with the thumb to splay out. So basically, on top, it's not in one center stream, but it's spread out throughout the, the, um, the pattern. So here we have this excess in the beginning, or I mean at the front of the fly here, and I'm gonna pull it down on the bottom of the fly. Because my fly is seven inches long or roughly, this piece will be significantly shorter than the top half, which is good. It adds a little change in uh, Adds a change in pattern and also keeps that taper that we're going to get towards the front here where this belly kind of recedes into the back right you can kind of already see it forming how this sort of stops creating that belly of the fish of the herring or this is just a continuous pattern right all right so now we're going to move forward and i'm moving forward about two eye lengths here about two eye lengths so now we don't have much hook left which is good I'm taking olive, and I'm gonna do that same bullet tie. Here I'm just a little bit closer, and I wanted to show you that bullet tie-in um, just a little bit closer. But here I'm going with a full olive. So uh, here's my tips. If you want, you can cut your tips so that they all line up, which is a good idea. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna lay the tips down so they cover this section, the thread section. See that? I'm covering the thread. I like to do one, two, three loose wraps. Push down with the thumb. You see how they're spreading out. Pinch with the fingers. Then you're ready to pull down. Okay. So there, I have a nice tying point. This is creating some extra bulk internally. It will allow water to not just flow through the fly, but this will actually push water, um, which is what you're looking for. Stripers are often feel first, you know, ask questions later fish. So you want this fly to push a lot of water. Again, I'm not gonna do a traditional hollow, but I'm gonna do this bullet point. And you see how now we're really creating this nice taper See that, we have this beautiful taper going on. A lot of water being pushed here. Um, and your shoulder is not gonna be thrown out after you cast this fly, you know, a hundred times. All right. So I'll go back. You can also make this fly for things like pike. And if you make something like this for pike, what I would do is put super glue on these tying points, but striped bass, since they don't have the teeth, I don't do that as much. Okay, so we're on our last tying point. And what I like to do for the last tying point, I just think it makes a cool look. I want, there's gonna be olive on top, and I want it to be about the same length as my previous olive section. So I find where that is. I just trim my tips. Trim my tips up there so they're nice and straight. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do one, two, three, and I'm gonna pull down with my thread. I'm gonna keep this hair 
on top. I do not want it to slide off to the sides, right? So now I have this gap down here. What I do is I come in with white and I have it short. It should be able to fit within the gap of the hook. So see here, this can fit in the gap of the hook. So I match my tips up to the olive section. Two good pulls and there we go. So now we have these matching sections, different colors, but matching in, si uh, matching in size. So now I'm gonna come in with my tool and push these fibers back. Great. And I am again going to do a bullet tie-in. All right, you can adjust this, clean it up sort of as you go. Make sure it's nice and even. I've missed a few fibers there, not a big deal. So now you can see we have this extended, this very short belly, this long extended top, but we are not done yet. Okay, everything looks good. Now we're going to add in the flashy stuff. So I like to add in lateral line on the side. Again, these herring are pretty flashy. So I'm going to add in this lateral line on the side. All I do is I lay it down about the length of the fly. Pull it over itself, so we have two sections. One's a little shorter than the other. But boom, it just adds this beautiful lateral line. So I'll do that to each side. Again, length of the fly, roughly, give or take. But you want it to be going down the center. You want it to follow the shank of the hook. That's sort of your guide, is like, hey, where's the shank of the hook? There it is. I want my lateral line to follow that. Okay. There's that. And then finally, we're going to add a nice dark contrast over the top. And we're going to do that. You can do it with anything that's dark. I like peacock curl. Um, that's sort of a classic for stripers, obviously. But uh, you can do it with whatever you want. So here what I do is I get a whole bunch of peacock curl and pull out any that are facing the wrong way. I will uh, grab sort of the tips, pull out any short ones. Right? And I like to have a pretty dark back. Here I have, you know, I don't know, 12 strands maybe, 15 strands of peacock. Um, but what you're trying to do is you're trying to get it to go the majority of the length. This is sort of old peacock so it's not super super long. But, um, so I'm going to tie it down here as long as it will go. The longer, the better, I'd say. If you can get it to go the entire length of the fly, that's fantastic. Again, you'll see I'm pushing down on it. That's to spread it out nice and evenly. So it's not just this little straight line down the back, but that it actually has some volume. See how it has some nice spread to it? So it's not just this one straight line right down the back. Um, okay, trim, the, trim those tips off, try to secure them just a little bit more, then I'll go to the very front and we'll whip finish. Almost done. This pattern, it's a real bummer when you lose it, because it takes a while to tie. <laughs> so when you lose one, it's just really a sad day. <laughs> Okay, so there's what we have so far. Beautiful fly. We're going to toss some eyes on. Um, so I'm going to take super glue. What I'm going to do is flip it, and I'm going to drop this super glue right on the side. I have eyes. You'll see them in a second. But I'm going to line them up. I'm going to try to line them up with my lateral line. Too, Mississippi. I like to put a little pressure for about five seconds. 
So you'll see what I got going on there. I got a little tab there. Brilliant, right? Kind of neat, kind of neat. Backwards tab eye. Um, so yeah, so I'll do that to both sides. And then we will resume after this dries. Okay, it's been a little bit. Um, for added security, I come in, this is solar as thick. Um, it's not, I don't really have a preference. I'll say Raid Zap, probably my favorite. But I come in and I will add some UV in between the eyes for some added protection. Just for a little added protection. Can't ever hurt to have a little added protection. Looks pretty good. Zap it real quick. I mean, this is turning out to be a tremendous fly. I mean, look at that. It's just a great. It's just a great. It's a great fly. I've caught. I've already caught many, many stripers this um, this season on it. Make sure your eyes are nice and straight, because once they once they uh, are done, it's over. You know, you can't can't change them once it's done. So that actually looks pretty good. You can adjust anything if need be here. Don't look into the light. Protect your eyes, UV. And boom, there we have it. So there is our herring fly that's been working incredibly well in the month of May uh, and early June for stripers here in Maine. Um, I'm gonna go wet this bad boy down and try to shape it a little bit and let it dry and then take a few pictures and boom. There, I mean really this and a chartreuse closer and you're like, you don't need any other fly in your box. So uh, thank you for watching. If you have any questions about it, please let me know. Uh, but other than that, we will see you next time. Thanks.